Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about uh, constraints and we're gonna constrain a class. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new Windows Forms application and define a class in the, um, the Form 1 class here under it at least. So we're gonna do my class and supply a generic type of T here. All right, and what we're gonna try to do is return a new instance of type T. So the IntelliSense recognized what I was doing, but you cannot do this at the moment. And that is because T could be anything. T could potentially be a class that does not have um, parameterless constructors. So we, um, or a parameterless constructor. So we can't do this. So what you do is you type in where after the generic syntax here and do a colon and then you supply your constraints. And a constraint will effectively um, narrow down the types that can be passed in uh, when working with this class. Okay, so we want generic type T to have a parameter list constructor and this has to be the last constraint. And, oh sorry, um, so when you, before you apply a constraint, you have to say what you're constraining, so where generic type T and then the colon and then your constraints comma separated so we can do we can make sure that the type implements iclonable and if you try to put a constraint after the new constraint you're going to get a compile time error so it has to be before and you'll be fine so now if we want to we can access uh, the clone method for this type because we can assume that it has a clone method because we constrained the generic type. So there it is. We can also constrain it to be um, a class, a reference type, or a struct. And you cannot um, use the new constraint with the struct. That's probably why it has to be last because it it's just easier to assess whether or not it's necessary. I believe structs, um, they always have a parameterless constructor, so this, con this specific constraint with the struct constraint is just unnecessary. So we can remove that and assume it's a value type. All right, we can also do subclasses. So let's replace iClonable with form. Um, this has to be gone, of course. So there's form. We can put that back in there if we want to. And now we can access all of the um, form stuff because we can effectively assume, assume that type T is a subclass or is form. So that's basically constraints. Um, you can apply this to methods, I believe. So we can take this out of here and um, remove the generic type, do this, and put that there. So that is how you would apply a constraint to a method if you have to. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'll see you next video.